Dear learners, I am Navi Hassan, heading the library system at Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. So, predatory publishing nowadays is an important part of science communication or scholarly communication landscape. It refers to unethical academic practices where journals or conferences exploit the scholarly publishing model for financial or other gains without providing proper peer review. These publishers often charge fees or APC from authors without delivering legitimate services leading to the dissemination of poor quality or even false publication. This phenomena not only undermines the integrity of scientific literature but also geoparadizes the career of academics and researchers who may knowingly or unknowingly publish in these deceptive journals or conferences or maybe composite books thereby damaging their credibility and the reliability of academic scholarship. So as part of this NPTEL course science communication, I shall be sharing my thoughts on predatory publishing and will be covering issues, challenges and what is the road ahead in this regard. As an author or academician or researcher, we all publish in journals, conferences, book chapters and books as well. It is therefore critical to understand the concept of predatory publishing so that knowingly or unknowingly we should not become a victim and should not bring disrepute to our name and career. I believe that this is going to be an interesting lecture with interesting case studies and examples. So this is the outline of presentation as part of this lecture I am going to cover some background information on predatory publishing, why, who factors for publishing in predatory journals, characteristics of predatory publishing, 16 principles of transparency given by COPE, general advice and approaches negative effects of predatory publishing, controlling the predatory publishing like how you can control it, trusted open access publishers and places for publishing, stories, examples from predatory publishing and on the basis of this all discussion I will be summing up. As far as the background of predatory publishing is concerned, in academics communication is done through publications in scholarly journals and conferences. The journals help in registering the claims of the researcher that they are the first to report unique findings. Journal publishing has evolved immensely with the advent of the internet and associated technologies. The first journal was published in 1665. Ever since then, the number of journals has increased significantly. Open access predatory journals are now part of the science or scholarly communication landscape. Directory of open access journals indexes 20,430 open access journals from 134 countries in 80 languages. Of these, 13,188 journals are without APCs as on March 16, 2024. Jeffrey Biel, an American university librarian, first used the term predatory in 2010. In the context of publishers and journals exploiting the author paying business model and online gold open access. After noticing a large number of emails inviting him to submit articles or join the editorial board of unknown journals, he began researching open access publishers and created BL's list of potential, possible or probable predatory scholarly open access publishers. Predatory publishing is generally defined as for-profit open access journal publication of scholarly articles without the peer review system. Predatory journals have no standards and no quality control and frequently publishes within a very brief period of time while claiming that articles are peer reviewed. Predatory publishers may cheat authors, funders, institutions by charging publishing related fees without providing the expected or industry standards services. 
predatory publishers may also deceive academics into serving as editorial board members or peer reviewers. Let's understand why, who factors for publishing in predatory journals. So the people are using predatory methods to quickly publish articles without the fear of review or plagiarism for immediate gains. There is an increasing need to publish a quota of research for degrees, promotions, points, grants, projects and improving profile. Low acceptance rate in the important or core journal is another important reason. And there is a fierce competition which compels researchers to publish in predatory journals. Then also for profit publishing, uh, these things are uh, becoming uh, more common. APC or author processing charges, a model that provides incentives for publisher to focus on the quantity of articles published rather than their quality. Lack of author awareness and lack of research ethics, especially in developing countries. AI tools like ChatGPT, Quillboard, Grammarly, etc. are easily available, which can be misused to create content for publishing. So, these are some of the things which uh, are considered under why, who factors as far as the predatory publishing is concerned. Predatory publishing is also described with many bad names, you can say, or with many other names like fake publishing, dark side of publishing, dubious publishing, low credibility publishing, deceptive publishing, scholarly bad faith, sham journals, pseudo journal, and with many more bad names. As you can see here that over the past two decades, predatory journals have rapidly increased their publication. This, dot, this data shows that predatory journals are still increasing day by day despite plagiarism tool or detecting tools are available. Predatory publishing uh, can be grouped mainly into three categories that is journals, conferences, books or book chapters. However, my focus here will be on journals. This is the website of BL's list which provides great information on predatory journals. This is the cable's list which is another important website providing information on predatory journals. So how does one identify predatory journal? This is possible uh, through BLs or Cables list. There are other ways as well like uh, Monis Berger 2017 identified 15 characteristics. Irfan Manish and uh, Paul Hossein 2017 listed 17 common characteristics. Samseer and Mohar 2017 identified 13 ways to spot predatory journals. And also uh, Nagab and Haynes 2021 uh, published evidence-based checklist for identifying predatory journal. So the overall characteristics of the predatory publishing are there is no peer review or there is lack of quality peer review, the guarantee of acceptance or the promise of very fast publication maybe in one week or in 48 hours as well. They are aggressively campaigning to submit articles or serve on the editorial board or to serve as a reviewer and hidden or unclear author fees which they are generally disclosing while uh, you have submitted your paper. Also, uh, they are mimicking the name or website style of more established journals. The name of the journal does not adequately reflect its origin. The publisher begins operation with a large fleet of journals, often using a template to quickly create each journal's homepage. The journal falsely claims to have an impact factor or uses some made up measures, fine international in standing. Also listing academics as members of editorial boards without their permission and not allowing to resign. Incomplete or misleading reporting of policies including copyright and user licenses, processes, personnel, performance and affiliation in the journal's website or correspondence and further like 
poor language usage including poor grammar and low production quality both in the presentation of the general description and guidelines and in some of the article that are published the lack of ethics policies and need for ethical declaration the lack of any corrections or retractions of policies on articles the lack of ability for articles to be retrieved on an electronic search platform in perpetuity or for articles to be retrieved at all despite being listed in a table of content so there is an agency known as cope or coop committee on publication ethics which is actually the body which provide details for solution to such problem to different stakeholders so this is the website of uh, that uh, cop which provides different details uh, for solution to such problems so this cop has come out with 16 principles of transparency although we have already covered the different characteristics of predatory publishing but these 16 principles have been given by cop to easily identify the predatory journal with the description for example if you want to identify the predatory journal as far as the 16 transparency principles are concerned from cop you can first see the website that the journal's website contains or may might be containing misleading or false information about uh, like indexing or metrics or membership of uh, scholarly publishers organization it may lack issn uh, although the issn could be there that could be genuine as well but issn is just a number of registration it is not a guarantee of quality then check the name of the journal the journal name is the same as or easily confused with uh, that of a reputed journal uh, what is the peer review process uh, of that journal uh, what is the ownership and management who is the governing body who are the people there in the governing body Uh, then next principle of transparency from cop is editorial team or contact information which you need to check you can also check the copyright and licensing things like policies and notices of copyright and publishing licenses and user license which are uh, which could be missing or which could be unclear then check the author fees uh, what they are charging uh, as far as the author processing charges are concerned then the next principle of transparency could uh, is process for identification of and dealing with allegations of research misconduct and next is publication ethics there are no policies on publishing ethics generally as far as these predatory journals are concerned then the number 11 in the principles of transparency is publishing schedule the periodicity of publication is not indicated or the publishing schedule appears erratic from the available journal content next is access the way in which content is available to readers and any associated cost is not stated and in some cases listed articles are not available at all next is uh, 13 which is archiving there is no electronic backup and preservation of access to journal in most of the cases despite big claims and number 14 is revenue sources business models business partnerships agreements or revenue sources are not stated publishing fees or waiver status are linked to editorial decision making then the number 15 under principles of transparency is advertising so advertising policy is not given or advertisements are linked to editorial decision making or are integrated with uh, published content and the last and number 16 principle of transparency of cop is direct marketing means direct marketing is obtrusive and gives misleading or false information then coop has also given some general advice and approaches as well as far as uh, these predatory publishing is concerned so cop uh, also provides discussion document as an educational service actions which may be taken at different levels by stakeholders as uh, given below in this screen so as to tackle avoid raise awareness of the problem of predatory journals for example uh, 
these are some of the actions which may be taken at different end for example at the end of authors or professional societies or institution like educate researchers supervisors librarians and administrators in publishing literacy and about uh, educate researchers supervisors librarians administrators in publishing and about fake journals then uh, there are uh, advice uh, to funders and institutions as well uh, those advice include uh, discourage publication in predatory journals and discourage citation of articles in predatory journals and there are some uh, like declarations as well in this regard uh, one of such is san francisco declaration on research assessment or dora then lead in uh, manifesto for research metrics the metric tide the hong kong uh, principles for assessing researchers at the journals or publishers and some of the steps those may be taken are check that your journal adhere to the uh, cop or doaj or ospa or wme principles of transparency and best practices in scholarly publishing and cope's core practices trademark journal if possible periodically perform online searches of your journal and article to check if they are being misappropriated or not consider making use of publicly visible platforms for open review or publishing open reports so these are some of the steps which may be taken as journal publisher or at the uh, publishing end then as a reviewer or as a editor you can also uh, perform some checks and balances like periodically perform online searches of yourself to check if you appear in on any uh, journals or conference editorial board if you are a reputed person in a particular area because your name could be there without your knowledge or permission verify spam invitation made by email text messages or telephone calls to join reviewer panel or editorial board consider using the dns checker to check the internet protocol of suspended uh, or suspected spam check journal name issn and urls whether these are real ones or not discourage citation of articles published in fake journals so these were some of the important advice and approaches uh, which may be considered at different ends uh, to like check or to control this uh, predatory publishing so there are various negative effects of predatory publishing uh, like uh, this uh, predatory publishing enhances misconduct in the search researchers may fabricate falsify data plagiarize content and publish the same in predatory journals the false research is indexed as well uh, in a platform like google scholar including scopus and web of science they also index predatory journals because every year thousands of journals are dropped by scopus and web of science as predatory journals because sometime they are also not able to properly identify it takes some time to identify predatory publishing it attracts reads and citations which implies that other researchers build or develop their work on the research published in predatory journals then further negative effect of predatory publishing include the fraudulent research and erroneous findings get into scientific literature and circulation the enormous amount of money of funding bodies is wasted the trust of the public in research and science is lowered so these are not the only impact which are there in general it can impact you as a researcher badly as well like there could be long term uh, reputation and career prospects sacrifice for immediate gain like uh, you will not uh, be gaining anything academically or no value is added while you are publishing in uh, predatory journals as a researcher permanent stain on your academic reputation may be caused because of publishing in the predatory journal even if your research is sound 
if you have written a very great paper but it would likely to be disregarded by the academic community if published in a predatory journal for fast publication there may not be readership or there may not be citations or impact on the domain of your good work that you have published in non reputed journal or predatory journal waste of your research funding could be held accountable by your funding agency your institution and supervisor including co author also suffers a lot if you want to evaluate a particular journal for its quality this screen can help you to categorize it under good fair or poor so then there are some important sites like there is a site known as think check submit which is for journals separately and for conferences separately so this is an international initiative called think check submit it helps researchers to identify trusted journals for publication the website provides a checklist which the researchers may use to evaluate and ascertain the credential of a journal or publisher like do you or your colleagues know the journal can you easily identify and contact the publisher is the journal clear about the type of peer review it uses or article index in services that you use is it clear what fees will be charged or apc will be charged do you recognize the editorial board is the publisher a member of any of the recognized industry in initiative like cop or doaj or ospa etc so this is the website of think check submit journals to help identify the predatory journals so there are not only the predatory journals but there are predatory conferences as well the predatory publishers people organizations also organize predatory conferences for monetary academic and other gains they lure early career researchers and charge registration fee they help arrange funds from the sponsors they includes name of prominent faculty members and scientists to attract a greater number of participants in fact the senior professionals may not know that their name is there in the conference as organizing committee member or a speaker or maybe uh, as a reviewer as well there is no peer review or editorial intervention as far as uh, the proceedings of these conferences are concerned and scope of these conferences are too broad means uh, paper on or article on any topic in general may be included so how to spot the predatory conferences how to identify that these conferences are predatory you can identify predatory conferences by some of these important parameters like conference organizers and sponsors you can check you can check the aims and objectives or scope of the conference you can check the agenda and editorial committee members name you can see the conference location which could generally be an interesting city you can check the website you can see to whom they are issuing the invitation you can check the regulations of the conference you can check whether they are following the peer review system or not and you can also see about the fee as well there is a separate website for identifying the predatory conference as well known as thinkcheckattend.org it is an international initiative that aims to guide and assist researchers and scholars when choosing trusted conferences to attend and to present their research this website provides comprehensive advice to help scholars to recognize the characteristics of a trusted conference to attend and submit their abstract through a number of steps and a checklist it is an initiative aimed at helping the scholarly community identify legitimate conferences and ignore those that may be misleading or fake this is the landing page of the think check attend dot org website which can help you identify the predatory conferences ugc has also set up a consortium for academic and research ethics or you can say ugc care 
एज अनाउंस बाई द यू जी सी नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ फोर्टीन जनवरी ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन टू प्रोमोट एकेडमिक एंड रिसर्च इंटेग्रिटी एज वेल एज पब्लिकेशन इथिक्स एंड ऑल्सो टू प्रोमोट हाई क्वालिटी पब्लिकेशन इन रेप्यूटेड जर्नल दैट वुड हेल्प इन अचीविंग हायर ग्लोबल रैंक्स एंड ओवरऑल इंप्रूवमेंट ऑफ द क्वालिटी ऑफ रिसर्च एंड एजुकेशन एंड ऑल्सो दिस यू जी सी केयर लिस्ट हेल्प टू डेवलप एन अप्रोच एंड मेथडोलॉजी फॉर आइडेंटिफाइंग द गुड क्वालिटी जर्नल्स एंड टू प्रिवेंट पब्लिकेशन इन ड्यूबियस सब स्टैंडर्ड जर्नल्स विच रिफ्लेक्ट एडवर्सली एंड टार्निस द इमेज ऑफ रिसर्च वर्क एंड दस लीड टू लॉन्ग टर्म एकेडमिक डैमेज एंड ऑल्सो टू क्रिएट एंड मेंटेन ए केयर रेफरेंस लिस्ट ऑफ क्वालिटी journals for various academic purpose so i think ugc has done a great job by creating a website uh, and also by preparing a ugc care listed journals so this is the website of the ugc uh, care uh, which is basically hosted at university of pune and university of pune is uh, managing this ugc care site this list on the ugc care uh has been divided into two groups uh one group uh, comprising journals which are listed in web of science and scopa database and another group of the journals is the list of journals which have been approved by ugc care this list also identifies the cloned or fake journals as you can see here on the screen the ugc has also published a good academic research practice or garp manual in september 2020 which is quite useful in this regard there are ugc guidelines which authors can keep in mind when choosing a journal as an outlet for their research like do the aims and scope of the journal match that of their research has the journal published articles of a similar nature what is the journal peer review system followed there does the journal reach the relevant audience etc although many times we are blaming the journal for rejection of our paper but some of the common factors for the rejection of a manuscripts could include that the manuscript content does not conform to the scope of the journal or not interesting to target audience manuscript style does not conform with the journal style format or guidelines duplication of significant overlap with existing work improper rationale of the study insignificant results of incremental research superficial treatment of the subject matter poorly designed study in terms of statistical test and controls preliminary results that lend to speculative interpretation and lack of clarity in writing etc so instead of blaming the journal or the editorial board while we are submitting our manuscripts or paper or article to a good journal we should keep these points in mind and i think it can greatly help you in the acceptance of your paper or manuscript and at least it can help you uh, in avoiding desk rejection at least it will go to the peer reviewer and you may receive some comments and you can then uh, revise your paper accordingly and your paper may be finally accepted and published if you can keep these things in mind so to be on a safer side we can explore some trusted publishers and places to publisher like if you want to avoid or if you are not sure whether the journal to which we are submitting a paper is reputed or not so we can explore some of the trusted publishers or places to publish this so like we can explore the website of open access scholarly publishers association or ospa uh, it can help us in uh, identifying the reputed journal or the genuine journal or the website of the international association of scientific technical and medical publishers can help us in identifying the genuine journals or the biomed central website also help uh, in this regard as for the journal uh, which are identified by this site 
or the PubMed Central uh, uh, can also help you in uh, publishing in the reputed journal in this domain. Of course, journals indexed by the directory of open access journals or DOAJ are also good journals and when published uh, your paper indexed uh, through uh, DOAJ or the journal is included in DOAJ that can help you in getting a good citation or in good visibility. Then the journals uh, listed by UGC care list or the journals approved by UGC care rather than the Scopus and Web of Science also uh, have some mark of reputation. They are also reputed journal. Of course, if the journal is indexed by LCS Scopa database, you always have an advantage. If you are able to publish your paper in a journal indexed by LCS Scopa database, that is a win-win situation. And uh, then there could be a journal indexed by Clarivate's Web of Science. So if the journal is indexed by Web of Science, then it is also a good journal. Then CWTS journal indicator is another important site which helps you identify good journals. Then SJR journal linkage, another competitor to the JCR and it lists uh, the journals uh, in the order of merit and you can see the merit of the journal and you can identify it and you can submit your paper in the journals listed here in the order of merit here. Of course, journals included in the journal citation report or JCR could be the best choice because the journals which are included in JCR may give you advantage over other journals because they are the journal which have impact factor as well. You can see that open access is now picking up. The momentum of the open access publishing is picking up globally and the numbers of journals or the papers published in the open access journals is going high and high every day. And the same is the scenario of open access publication in India as well. If one nation, one subscription happens, it will further promote open access publication movement because people will be having access to lot many resources and one of the component of one nation one subscription is to support APC's charges as well. So what could be the role of libraries in this regard in this whole uh, predatory publishing landscape or in this scenario we can start conversation about scholarly publishing process or entire ecosystem with the relevant community. We can educate researchers how to select journals for publishing their research. We can create sufficient awareness among the uh, probable authors. We can create resources, tools, support systems, library clinics, consultations, etc. We can help create policy guidelines. We can be part of the team which assists researchers. We can share information about predatory publishing. We can monitor institutions publication and guide accordingly. So these are some of the uh, important steps we can take or we can help support our institution in taking these, these steps. Now let me give you few interesting examples of predatory publishing. So this is an example of how a journal has included a paper in its issue without the consent of the author that to a web of science index journal. Later, the journal was removed on my complaint. You might always be receiving such types of speedy publication offers from various journals and conferences and also uh, a call for book chapter. Also, the offers as editorial board member or reviewer you might be receiving through email, sometimes through SMS, sometimes through WhatsApp and sometimes there are calls as well inviting you to become editorial board member or reviewer of a journal. Such predatory publishers may start with a fleet of many journals like you are seeing on my screen. These predatory publishers may not only start with a single journal, they may also start with a fleet of journal. They can create a template and they can start with many journals with wide scope. The name of the journal could be close to the name of a very famous or reputed journal or with the word it may start like international peer reviewed journal indexed by this database, that database. They may be giving all the false information. 
the, the call for the papers could also look like a normal if you see the call for the papers by these predatory journals this may also look like a normal call as you can see on my screen see the matching name here the uh, predatory journals name is international journal of social science and humanity and the actual journals name is international journal of humanities and social sciences so while these predatory journals are choosing the name of their journal they are using some big words like international or they are uh, naming the journal very close to the name of a reputed journal as you are seeing in this case the chief editor may be a very reputed person and uh, the chief editor may not be even aware that her or his name has been used as the chief editor of that journal so in one of the uh, paper i could see that when the chief editor of that particular uh, predatory journal was contacted by email the chief editor was surprised to know that her name has been used there as a chief editor the publication fee in case of this predatory journal is showing as us dollar 200 but interestingly the journal is asking uh, the fee in bangladeshi taka using western union so it is very clear that it is a fake journal published from bangladesh who is asking apc charges as us dollar 200 but in bangladeshi currency using the western union money transfer method this is one of the most popular examples of a predatory journal where many of you might have published earlier this journal was indexed by scopus as well now it has been removed from scopus so the problem with this journal was uh, library philosophy and practice lpp that it is published from a very reputed uh, university it is not taking apc charges as well but it was not following the review process i could see that some of the people from india have published 10 or more than 10 paper in a year in this journal so it was indexed by scopus as well so they might be having those many paper still appearing in scopus database so fortunately this uh, journal has been identified as a predatory journal and this journal has been removed from the scopus database this is fake website of journals which looks like ugc care website so you should be cautious while identifying the website as you can see on my screen contractors are everywhere which are ready to take contract for writing papers for you for publishing your paper speedily they can uh, write synopsis for you they can uh, write thesis for you they can write dissertation for you they can manage everything for you so this is actual board this is the actual picture which has been taken uh, from one of the shops from delhi ncr which says articles research paper thesis and dissertations writing and publication is done there don't always use big people's name for acceptance of your paper like in this case people still used this big name even after his death so the author is no more available in this world but people made him co-author simply to attract uh, acceptance for their paper because he is a reputed person there are interesting stories heard in this regard like this one when a researcher who publishes a study every two days reveals the darker side of the science so this is the person who used to publish uh, a study almost every uh, second day so he revealed the darker side of the science so the paper which are accepted by reputed journal uh, published uh, by reputed authors not necessarily be the genuine papers always uh, so this is the darker side you can go through the full story of this uh, author who has revealed the darker side of the science a news item as how the predatory publishers are exploiting academics and scientists appeared in punjab times as you can see on my screen this is an interesting example from a saudi arabian author and also the dean who has uh, more than 20 restrictions 
So this is again a news item. You can go through the full story. So 20 retraction, it is too much. And as you can see, this retraction stamp could be a dent in your life forever. So avoid having such an stamp because once your paper is retracted, the paper still appears uh, in those journals, but there is a stamp like retracted. So avoid having a stamp like retracted. It is better to publish paper in a less reputed journal, but a genuine journal instead of like getting a stamp of retracted by publishing false or uh, plagiarized data. So with this, I would like to sum up that predatory publishers are corrupting the scholarly or publication scenario and giving the open access movement a bad name. Journals that exploit the author page model damage scholarly publishing and promote unethical behavior by researchers. There is no single identifier or single list that can be used. Don't blame the predatory journals only. Think critically and engage with your research community. Uphold publishing ethics yourself. Don't do anything to compromise as it would reflect on your career. Always publish in journals that uphold academic standards and have a statement of publishing ethics. So I think these are some of the things you have to take care and uh, these are references that could be very useful for you and uh, these references have been used by me as well in preparing this lecture and these are few more references for your guidance which can help you understanding different uh, related information uh, with reference to the lecture that I delivered on predatory publishing and this is the disclaimer. Uh, because I wish to acknowledge that this lecture has been prepared from different sources to help the learners understand the topic for academic and research use. I duly acknowledge the scholars and the website content providers whose material have been used in this lecture. Wherever possible, the content have been acknowledged. However, any omissions is duly regretted. These slides have been used in my previous talks, presentations and publications as well. So I would like to close my lecture with this quote from Charles Darwin that it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to the change. So be responsive to the change if you are publishing uh, an article in a journal or in a conference or you are contributing a book chapter or if you are writing a book, please follow the guidelines and please be cautious to avoid uh, any, any challenges to your career, to your reputation uh, and try to understand what you can do to avoid the predatory publishing. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. If you still have any query, you can email me as given on this screen. Thank you very much and happy learning.